Hi, my name is Roland and I'm going through the Linux Mint 8 basics. Just in case people aren't comfortable or wanted to know a little bit more about Linux Mint before they started using it. The first and most important thing is the menu button at the bottom left here. If you click on it, left mouse click, you'll see your places up here. These are all your folders. So you have a home folder, a main computer folder, you can even look at other machines on the network and of course your desktop and these are some system informations where you can lock your screen you can log out or you can turn off the computer altogether over here we have all of our favorites these are all our applications that we set as our favorites so we've got Firefox which is the web browser Pigeon for Internet Messenger I've installed I've created these favorites the word processor open office which is similar to Microsoft Word and something similar to Excel which is open up a spreadsheet. I've also installed Google Chrome on my browser but that's for another day. So those are my favorites. Now if I wanted to see all the other applications that are there I can click up here for all applications and you can see all the categories. So internet, office, science, so on and so forth. Now let's say for example that I wanted to make Google Chrome not my not in my favorites. I would right mouse click and untick that. To go back to my favorites, I can simply just click this button here, favorites, and you can see that Google Chrome has disappeared. If I wanted it back, I would just go back to all applications, go down to the internet category, right mouse click on Google Chrome and show in my favorites. There we go. I can actually hold down the left mouse button and drag it over as well to move it around the way I want. But let's show some applications. With Linux Mint, Firefox comes already installed and it also has, U has sorry, YouTube installed, already has Flash installed. As you can see the splash screen here has some information about Linux Mint 8. But if we were to type in YouTube at the top, we could find that and type in, let's say, black hole. We can click and voila, we have our flash already working. No need to install. So let's close out of that. We have our normal ba bookmarks. It's fairly simple. If you're used to web browsers, that will be quite easy for you. Now for the kids, they probably like to do chatting and probably mes MSN Messenger is the first application they'll look for. If you go to Menu, you will find that you've got your Pigeon Internet Explorer, uh, Internet Messenger here. And basically, you can come in and add an account. So this is just your initial welcoming screen. Go down to your protocol and look, MSN Messenger. You can add, enter in your email address right here and your password and you're away. It also supports things like Facebook and Google Talk. I'll just close out of this. Now the next one I'd probably show you, actually I forgot to mention it, if you wanted to knew the name of an application but you weren't sure where it was, you can actually type it in. So let's say for example we type in DIA and look Dia Diagram Editor. Much, much easier to find that way if you're not sure which uh, which uh, category that you need to search for over here. I'll just go back to my favorites there. Now, in terms of Microsoft Word, we have something called OpenOffice, which has a word processor. It's very similar. Basically, you can type something in, say hello there. You can highlight it, make it bold by Control-B. You can center it. You can make it a large heading and then center it again. And you can simply just save it. Now, you can actually save it in folders. This Tux folder is, because my username is Tux, that's the actual home folder. 
but it's much better to save a document in the documents folder that's actually under tux. So if I save that there and I just call it test, I can actually save it under this file type, I can actually save it as a Word document. So let's save it as a Word document. And let's close this out. Now if I want to find it again, I can go to menu, go to my home folder, go to the documents, and we have a test.doc. So if I just double click on it, OpenOffice will open automatically, and voila, there we have it. The beauty of OpenOffice is that you can also export pr directly as a PDF. So if I click on this, name test, I'll save it into my documents, save it as a PDF. I can then close out of this and double click and there you go. PDFs are the perfect way to send emails. So I'll leave that at that because I'd like to show how the installation of a program works. So if you go to start, go to software manager, you have to enter in your, your password. This is your just your normal password. It will bring up a software manager. If you want to install something, say for example Opera, which is another web browser, you can simply click on this plus install, click on apply, and it will start to download the files and it will install it. It downloads the files from a, s a safe place. It's not just anywhere on the internet, it's actually provided by the guys who do Linux Mint. Or, if it's not done by the guys with Linux Mint, it's done by the guys at Ubuntu. Linux Mint is based off Ubuntu, which is based off Debian. And one of the great things about all three of those uh, operating systems is that they have an internet-based application store, very much like the App Store for your iPhone. And you can install programs, whatever you want, it's usually going to be there. If there's something that you want it to do, there's usually something on these applications that you can install. So basically, it installs the program, close, close the window, go to the menu. Now if you're not sure where it was, you can just type in, we installed Opera, and there you go. There's the Opera web browser. I agree. There you go. There you have it. Now the last thing I'd like to show you is the updates. Every operating system needs to be updated to make sure that any vulnerabilities that have been found can get fixed. The easiest way to do that is that there is a little lock at the bottom right hand side of your screen. As you can see my system is up to date. If it wasn't up to date that lock would be broken. If it was broken you could simply click on it as such and you'd come up with this screen. And usually there would be details of the upgrades that you need to do here. You can select all and then you can click on install updates. It'll prompt you for a password and it'll download those updates and install them for your computer. Sometimes you have to reboot your entire computer, most of the times you don't. And that's it for Linux Mint. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a lot of fun getting to know it.